Welcome everyone to Wanderlust in Wild Mount. Um, we are here. We are back. It's a new year, and you know we're just we're just happy to be here because people were sick over the holidays, uh, and you know people survived the holidays, and now we're all back. So we're gonna go around. We're gonna say who we are and who we're playing, and uh, I'll start with myself because I'm already talking. Hello, I'm Lindy. I will be playing. Wendell Eustace Abernathy, Lucius Throckwaddle Hossenpfeffer the Fourth of the Havisham Hossenpfeffers. He's uh, a nobleman, a warlock, maybe involved in a pyramid scheme, although we'll call it the Prism of Power. Uh, philanthropist, you know, helps orphans. It's it's great. Aspiring author, you know, there's <laughs> no cult activity going on here. Um, speaking of no cult activity, definitely not. Uh, D20 Coup de Gras, how are you this evening? Yes, that is me. Uh, I'm doing fine. I'll be playing Harlan Flipcloak. He's a hobgoblin wizard. Definitely not a noble. And Definitely uh, not. Yes. Um, and uh, yeah, uh, he uh, specializes in time manipulation, which has gotten, into, gotten us into a whole bunch of hijinks that um, I fail to see a way out of at this point. It's fine. It's 800 years in the past, so no one from our time, <laughs> hopefully, maybe, will know of our uh, <laughs> shy jinx and shenanigans. Although, that's probably not going to be the case, uh, because we have Shiny Pilot with us. How are you tonight? Doing okay. <clears throat> Just wrapping up that are now coming in for some reason due to phone problems, but that's okay. Anyways, I'm happy, ready to play. I will be Igor. He's a hunchback. He's the butler to Wendell, uh, and he is a half orc. He's a lovable, lovable old soul. And not the brightest, but I like playing him. I like playing with these people. So let's do this. Let's do this indeed. Might be Nuggetosaurus's slogan for this year, and no affiliation with Nike whatsoever. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Nuggetosaurus, how are you tonight? I'm doing okay. Um, still recovering from my sickness, but doing much better. So I'm glad to be here. Um, my name's Nuggetosaurus. I play Wintress Gilseen, the Drake Warden Fairy Ranger, who is Chaos Incarnate. And um, yeah, I don't, she's not a noble, I don't think. Um, also not a butler, uh, not a wizard. She's, she, she's, I'm not sure what she is. She, um, her backstory is kind of fluid right now. It's just whatever comes out of my mouth is her backstory. So <laughs> I'm very excited to play here. Very excited to be back with you guys and, and, and jump back into this insane situation that we're in. And I'm, I'm ready to see what we do tonight. So let's go. <laughs> I'm ready to see too. Uh, someone's backstory being just whatever comes out of their mouth is Travis. You would have no idea what that's about. Uh, you always come up with, you know, novels and, Oh, there you go. Encyclopedia is a backstory. Pages yeah. Pages of, of yeah. prose <laughs> on. Uh, no, not 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 necessarily. No. Hi, I'm producer Trav. I'm very glad to be here. Happy New Year. Uh, I these people are wonderful, and I'm I'm so lucky to get to play with them. I'm playing Lamont Quinlan, who is just a hot mess. You know, He's just like all of us. He's so relatable that way, uh, except he was uh, was a artificer who then almost died or did die and then died a few more times. And now I'm a rogue. <laughs> uh, and what's, what's the thing I am Frank where I'm dead. What's that called? The thing where I've got this undead arm there. What is that? What's that background? Called? You know, uh, you've been gone for so long. I've just kind of wiped that out of my mind. I'll put it back in a little bit later. Um, it's in D &D. returned. <laughs> maybe it's in D &D. Thing. D &D. It's a thing in D and D. You it is. It, it is. You book. are a thing. I I made you a thing, and <laughs> and it, you're wonderful. You used to be a Kalishtar. We can, we can go. We can go with that. You're part Kalishtar, formerly Kalishtar. I'll look it up. Sure. And so, like a true narcissist pain in the ass, uh, <laughs> he has a shining sword of justice that gets him into terrible trouble. Back to you in the studio. That means. Thank you. Means Thank you. Um, shining sword of justice um, is not what we call our dungeon master. Uh, because his name is Deception Check. Uh, how are you this evening? <laughs> I wow. Um, I I kind of like Shining Sword of Justice, but um, you, know, you know, I feel like if there was there was more justice going on, we would all be dead. 
So uh, oh. I appreciate you not being a shining sword of justice. That, that's fair. That that <laughs> is really really fair. Uh, here I am. Ah, yes, it wasn't the returned. Um, Travis, you are the damn the reborn. The reborn. The reborn. Right. reborn. Yes, you have been reborn and therefore now have the fun hand. Uh, you are he of the fun hand. Um, and that's got all the meanings that go along with I, it. I was Hi, just I'm thinking about those. <laughs> I, I am Deception Check, and I am the ringleader of this three-ring circus of awesome that is Mondays at Alexandria, Wanderlust and Wildmount. We are in the final chapter of our adventure with these characters. They will either survive or fail somewhere in the past, trying to stop the evil that is the, the he who waits from completely corrupting the future and killing everyone they love, which has already happened, but they went back in time, so maybe they might change it. Um, we have had one character leave the group. Howl, the stalwart companion of everyone that they all tank. liked. Uh, the, the one person in this entire world that, that Wendell was caroused of, um, yeah. she's left. Will she return? When will she return? How will she return? Scarily. We know that she will return in a scarousing manner. Yes. These are questions we will find out uh, at some point in the future. I do believe I am planning at, at the moment. Um, I believe I believe Nuggetosaurus knows what I'm talking about. But where we left off last time, our friends and companions of group made it finally to Quilanthri, the mystical city which houses Bromsandi and his artificery, the place where the item that brought he who waits back. The reason why they are sent back in time. They fought through the Monastery of the Distressed Body, ended up taking it over and co-opting it into uh, one of the Prism of Power's new uh, centers of power. Um, <clears throat> the, <throat> the home of the trickle-up power scheme uh, also, Harlan's Fitness Cultists, uh, which, which uh, I, I am joining this year um, as my New Year's resolution. I want to be a Harlan <laughs> Fitness Cultist. Um, and so they made it to Quantry. They started looking around. Place is a little weird. Kind of like a two-tone city where the bottom was all nice and clean and the top was just old and covered with moss and vines and whatnot. And they got a little closer got almost a little too close and found out that the entire bottom 30 feet of this valley city is a clear gelatinous cube and ready to eat them and able of making 10 foot pseudopods that can knock them off of whatever they're doing. And that's just what welcomed them to the city. <laughs> then they found crystal clear statues of glass throughout the entire city, just posed in weird ways, uh, up in windows, uh, along the ground, in the, in the cube. It really, really disconcerting. These almost perfect representations of different peoples from different times, all perfectly reproduced in clear crystal. Hmm. Very interesting. So these fine fellows decided to make their way all the way to the biggest and most interesting <laughs> looking building in all of Quilon 3, uh, uh, on the flying carpet, of which Wendell made a quite beautiful cloud of himself. Yes. Uh, and and hid the flying carpet and the members of group on top of it from the prying eyes or prying senses of the gelatinous cube below and the other minions within Quilon 3. At the top of the spire, they found themselves met with a conundrum it seemed like something had happened here. All of the glass statues were facing the middle and something had happened to shock them in almost anger. Like they, they, these statues were formed in fear, almost, it seemed. Now, Harlan got a little close and decided to look into it and through his manipulation of time and his abilities as a divination wizard was able to find out that something Bromsandi had done had connected this small town in this tower to the 222nd level of, of a hell which 
was Chewy Blux's realm and basically sucked at a living gelatinous cube out of that realm and had it just flow over the entire city, killing almost everyone there uh, because they pissed off from Sandi. Uh, other than that, we really can't tell what happened there, but we do know that there is something living inside that tower and it took notice of our heroes about the same time they took notice of it and flew on away rather timely. So we will pick up with our heroes, Wendell, Eustace, Abernathy, Lucius, Throckwaddle, Hassan, Pfeffer IV at the Habsham, Hassan, Pfeffer's Cloud, underneath the flying carpet flown by Harlan with everyone else aboard, sitting in the middle of the, of the city. Where will you go now? And I will bring that map up so you guys get to decide. Yes, please. Thank you. Makes Thank it easier God. if you actually see the map. Um, I All ask right. you to tell me where you're going, and then I don't let you see where you're going. So, you know, yes. you're welcome. Um, I'm going to label this map a little bit. Um, That's fine. Please do. Big old, big old approach. So, where are we right now? We're at the big circle. Okay. Yeah, you were, you were here at the okay. big circle. You've flown away, and so you're kind of like out in the middle here. Now, there, this city is a city of spires and towers no mm -hmm. no it's a it's a loving place even the cube just wants to give you hugs so you found all these tires each spire is well above the level that is the gelatinous cube but from there what do you wish to do all right first off i'd like to look out for gargoyles okay uh give me a perception check to see if you see any did Harlan share about the vision that he saw? Did... Oh, yes, definitely. Okay. Oh, yeah. He, okay. Detail it in every uh, way he could. Okay, cool. Um, and then he's going to be like, look, no gargoyles. You know, there are lots of forms that could be gargoyles at each and every spire here. Now, some, when you get closer to them, end up being, you know, glass statues. Uh. Avian types. Uh, you believe there was a race once called the Aracopra? It seems that some existed during this time and were uh, and are, are represented in these perfectly rendered glass statues. I see, I see. Others you can't tell. I'm guessing the Aracopra may have survived the... Um... The cube incident. The, the, oh, the, okay. the glassing and the cubing. So who knows? The, uh, <laughs> the gleaming of the cube. Uh, yes, is that, is that what happened here? I don't know. Okay. I... Well, this this pyramid-looking building over here. Uh, yes. Yeah. Is um, that inside of the cube, or does it stick up above the cube? You How can tall? notice that um, at the base of the building, you see like refuse thrown around and then it seems like it's clear and then it's dirty. You see how like there's a clear, mm -hmm. the clear space on the bottom, mm -hmm. that's the 30 or 40 feet okay. of cube. Above oh, that. I see that on these buildings now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So like half of it, half of oh, it is okay. below the surface of the cube. Yeah, okay. yeah, everything there. Hmm. We should we should definitely check out that building. It looks important. And are you guys sure you don't want to take a news bath? Like they're great. You're welcome I, to take. I, as I, you I fear I would fare as well as that sparrow we saw get dissolved. Um, maybe in the Feywild. Yeah, I'll take you guys to a good place. Please we don't. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm telling you, it's great for your skin. You come out and you feel like a newborn baby. It's fantastic. Right. Well, I don't think Igor, Igor is skeptical. I think, I think anyone in their right mind would potent. be. <laughs> I've spent enough time as a baby. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. I can't picture Harlan as a baby. That's just weird. <laughs> I did, he's, and I loved it. He's one of those it. people that just like popped out as a grown ass adult. No, no, he was <laughs> already this red little hobgoblin <laughs> with not like all the other little baby hobgoblins had little curls of hair, bald, bald his whole life, just a bald <laughs> hobgoblin baby with a very with an always serious expression. <laughs> 
Anyways, <laughs> enough about baby Harlan. Um, yeah, so um, <laughs> we should definitely go to that building. It looks super important. Perhaps we will we'll check out the towers on the way to that building and we'll make our way there. Yes? Sure. All right. Anything of interest, we could stop. Sounds good. And I'll just dr- cloudily drift along. You know, like put it here. We're going to drift this way. Mm-hmm. I forgot look, that you're looking a cloud in the towers. Right now. Yes, yes, I'm. I'm cosplaying as a cloud, and I'm. Can you? In and you rolled really, really, really well, and so only um... telepathically. <laughs> oh, that's right. Okay. <laughs> yes. All right. Do you stop at any of the towers? Uh, you know, we just we we slow down a lot. We just kind of like really slowly drift by the towers. Anything we see within the windows that can grab our attention? Oh yes, every single window or opening along every tower you get close to has an array of crystal statues. I don't of like different that. creatures. Many of them are bird-like, not like the Aarakocra that you saw with the wings that kind of confuse you. These are are. More like crows, in a way. More like kinku. Mm. I still don't like that they're all glass. Like, below us is just acid, and above us is all glass figurines, and it's not cool. <laughs> well, the city's way... I mean, it is wondrous, but not the type I was expecting. Definitely it explains why no one's returned, I believe. Well, no one's returned until us. Yes, that. Drift. <laughs> Drift. Just a gently, slowly wafting cloud mm-hmm. by the towers. Just to see if there's anything especially <laughs> interesting. I would like to see... Can we see this fountain here? You yes. can drift over it. Sure. Woo. What, can. What's, the, what's the figure there? Uh, what the figure on yeah. the fountain itself? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, it seems to be a. Is it glass? A, <laughs> uh, no, it's actually out of stone. Uh, it is a very regal, powerful, and authoritative bird, much like the crow statues you saw. The bird city. Reading from a large scroll. <laughs> One, three. Is, is there anything written? I mean, I know we're a good ways up, but are there, is there like the little, they're like, blah, blah, blah. Uh, no, it was just a representation okay. of a scroll. Uh, there wasn't anything written on it. Or just on the fountain in general. Like, is there a shiny plaque? Like, N- no. Okay. Cool. That's cool. Well, it's obviously a centerpiece of the city. It must have been a very important whatever they are. Avianic people. Oh, uh, well, just give me an intelligence check. Straight intelligence. Alright. <laughs> yeah, you're not familiar with birds. Bird mm. peoples, bird types. It's just, I mean, you heard of the Aarakocra because they were interesting. They were extinct, but these guys, eh, maybe they're flightless versions of Aarakocra. Maybe. Long time ago, I suppose. Yes. Um, let's continue. Pause. We're going to pause for a second. While all this is going on, Lamont, you've been really quiet, sitting perched, if you will, uh, with your billowing cloak behind you, doing having a mind of its own, watching what everyone's seeing. And you see these statues and all these wonderful perches that you could literally brood from very easily in a town if it was yours. Um, what are what are your thoughts about what you're seeing so far? Uh, I think all Lamont does during all of this is eventually hop down, turn on his heel, and go. Bird people, dude, and then just stroll about the deck. I could go up to the top deck. Okay, no, you're you're on, on the a, flying you're carpet. On a, the flying car. Right oh, I thought we were on the ship. Okay. No, no, the ship. The ship is missing right now. Well, ship. the you ship know. is where we left it. Um, big right. old air quotes. Because right, it is exactly where Harland left it. 
and Hal as... knows nothing about where it is. Oh, no. I'm the club, okay? It's secure. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I can imagine. You got this huge airship, and it's just got a locking stick. <laughs> what? <laughs> Okay, sorry. No, I would just like for there to be a, long, a, a lull in the conversation. And then you just hear Lamont go, bird people, dude. And he doesn't really have anything else to contribute to this particular... Uh, roll, roll straight intelligence. You're, you're pretty smart. <laughs> yeah. you're, 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 a, you're a being <laughs> of the world. I am. And if Lamont doesn't make this intelligence check, and I And you're in the game, idea. which is amazing in its own right. So I want you to roll, because... Oh, yeah, no. They're bird people. I think... I think... <laughs> To my my non pants right now, my cloudy pants, galore. Have you seen <laughs> creatures like this before? <laughs> I, what? Yes, I have. Why? What? what does it mean to you? Why do you care? Well, we are investigating this city, and there's, you know, mystery afoot. So it might be good to know what these things are. We're trying to stop Fine. from Sandy. Fine. Remember? Yes. Fine. I mean, at this time, he's locked away, so I don't have to worry. That's why I'm not screaming in your head anymore. I've noticed it's, it's been actually, actually a really safe place right now. Yes. So... We're trying to keep it that way, but in the future as well. You know. Fine. Fine. Kenku. Kenku. Yeah, they can't really speak, so they just repeat everything that they heard. So, like, yeah, it's a really strange thing. They're cursed. I mean, looking at this city, I could see why, probably, but probably um, they're not allowed to actually have any create like any creative thought of their own. They can only copy. Um, so it's uh, it's made them quite interesting. I mean, Kinku poets are pretty cool. I'd ima I'd imagine so, actually. I mean, it's derivative, but it's still interesting. Maybe we can get some Kenkus on the propaganda department. <laughs> um, telepathically. H Harlan, have you uh, heard of all this Kenku being in one place before? You know, these cursed bird people who can only repeat things that they've heard? Oh, I do recall a rumor of some people like that. That they were unable to create their own works of art. Yes. And Do you think this is where they got cursed? The cursing in epicenter, so to speak? It could be possible. This whole place seems cursed in many ways. Indeed. Right, I'm just going to drift this way now. Just let me know if you want me to stop or anything. Let's go to the... Pyramid shape that Wintress suggested. Yeah, I'm just gonna drift by these buildings in case we see anything other than shit tons of Kenku uh, in the windows. Okay. And then, you know, just, just also that way we can assess for threats on the pyramid before getting too close. Okay. Uh, well, I'll, I'll read you a quick description of the pyramid as you fly around it. Ooh, yes, please. A large squat tower dominates the surrounding buildings. Heaped around its base is a jumble of a jumble tangle of old machinery clockwork parts, piles of broken glass shards, and numerous oddly shaped glass statues. Some of these statues appear stretched as if still viscous when fashioned, and almost as though they elongated themselves trying to escape their fate. That's what you see below you. That's creepy. But nothing okay. moving, nothing alive That's around def you. Definitely not terrifying. Uh, yeah, no. it's fine. I'm just gonna make notes in my, my journal. And we'll approach a bit. Loop, do, 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 do. Is there a way to? I suppose it does. So it looks like there's ways to enter from the top of the building on all these buildings. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, if there's Aerocrocra, that would make sense too. Or an agency. See, it seems as though the top of the tower is open and that you could possibly descend into it. It's dark inside. It's hard to see. So until you got closer, you would not be able to tell exactly what's waiting for you in there. But I mean, the town looks dead. You mean potentially waiting? Oh, well, I'm sure something. The floor is waiting on you to land on it. I mean, there are things in there waiting for you. The floor, he says. The yes. floor. Clues, <laughs> air, <laughs> possibly something fun. I don't know. 
Yeah. Mm-hmm. I'm just I a cloud, touch- just drifting that way. Yes, I'm touching this floor. <laughs> <laughs> the entire building is a mimic. <laughs> <laughs> that would be horrifying. That would be horrifying. <laughs> Let's hope that's not happens. As no, yes. no, no, no. I wouldn't have said it out loud if it was really going to happen. I feel like I'll the mimic and the, and the gelatinous epilogue. cube would have duked it out by this point, too. You know, mm, they're right next maybe. to each other. I mean, it's in the gelatinous cube, so... <sighs> we so much damage friends. over time. Oh, no, it's mm, worse. Oh, <laughs> that's okay. I, don't, I don't know. And then we'll what? gently descend like fog. Like, a, like a, just a charming little cumulonimbus. It's floating over. Okay, as you float over and you and you start looking down, um, <laughs> I'm sorry. Were you going to say something, Trip? I'm just saying she really likes being that cloud. Yeah, I, <laughs> I know. Do. It's great. I love I love window cloud. I've had window this cloud spell for many levels and I've never gotten to use it. <laughs> hey, you know what? All the look, you got all the information about the kinku from the cloud. I mean, smart. And if we gave, we so, gave her a, the, uh, look, we all know the information's in the cloud. Exactly. So. You know, and if and if you and if you had a bag of holding, you'd have cloud storage. We would. So I do. Oh my god. <laughs> see, there it's you my go. My lunchbox. <laughs> so you have cloud storage. Yes. You look below you, and you see in the center of the space below you, which looks to be uh, completely free of any gelatinous cube issues. It looks like it's a the floor that you could land upon is above the level of the gelatinous cube. No, no, I'm, I'm saying it's not there. You can tell the difference. Now that you've seen the gelatinous cube, mm-hmm. you know where it's at. Okay. okay. And and this gelatinous cube is rippling like it's followed you. It knows you're there. So oh, if you like that. Okay. So even even through the cloud, uh-huh. um, it, it hacked the cloud, unfortunately. It I don't know. It hacked the cloud, but um, hey, at least we're disguised from other things. That's true. <laughs> so below, there is, seems to be some sort of contraption in the center. Uh, it is uh, based off of a box with many sort of like pipes or something coming off of it. Uh, several different ones going in different directions. It might be antennae or a furnace of some kind. It's hard to tell from this height looking down. Uh, within there is a lot of like furnaces and other refuse, sort of like almost the same refuse you see along the base of this tower or this fortress kind of space. It's all the same sort of thing. Broken glass, all chemical furnaces, general refuse. Looks like lots of papers scattered around um, in stacks and whatnot. But this large thing in the center is what's really dominating the space. Does it look like Broom Sandy's work? Oh, I, like- it could be. I mean, I, I give you an, I give you all an insight check to see if you think it's a creation of Brahm Sandy's or it's just like a, a uh, an item that's sitting there. Or, Someone built something. This is a suspicious cloud. It will it will insight. Yeah. Ooh! Oh, and I'm I'm Gwindle's not the worst at insight. That will be a nineteen. Okay. okay. It does definitely looks like a Brahm San, uh, Brahm Sandy creation. Ah. Uh. Sunday's With that insight, here. being able to look at it, you actually also recognize another piece of this. <gasps> you see a, the a coffin-shaped oh, no! <laughs> container in the center, which looks a lot like Centimere's coffin. Uh-huh. Almost exactly like Centimere's uh-huh. coffin. And it is connected to this entire contraption. Harlan, Harlan, look, it's Centimere's coffin connected what? to from Sandy's contraption. I don't. See, oh, right over there. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Right, right in the center of those those things. Just... Do you think he's inside, or has he yet to be uh, coffined? If this contraption has been built, I think he's in there. Uh, what should we? What should we do with this? Well, maybe he's seen from Sandy. We know he doesn't like him. He's the one who put him in this box. I suppose we should try to chat with him. Maybe he was here when the city turned went to glass. Wouldn't he have ooze? told? Us, wouldn't he have told us that us told that to us in the future? 
he was cursing an awful lot, and we didn't really ask him any questions. He did seem rather irate. I think he'll be just as irate here. Maybe not. Uh, he won't have, he would at least, at least in the present, he hasn't had 800 years to stew over it. <laughs> <laughs> you know. Especially if he's claustrophobic, that would just be terrible. Um, he might, might be much more cordial if he thinks we're going to let him out. He is. Um, <laughs> <laughs> this is a terrible idea. Let's, the cloud shall descend a little lower. Okay. Are you going in quietly, or are you not trying to hide your approach? Because as the cloud gets closer, it becomes yes. noticeable. Yes, yes, yes. Um, I'd imagine that I'm st we're still trying to hide our approach from the outside of the tower, maybe not the inside, because it's kind of inevitable on the inside. So, like, as we, we go in, the cloud will just kind of go around the sides, and then the carpet will go through once, you know, okay. we're over the edge. So that way, whatever's inside, you know... It's going to see us anyways as we descend, but stuff on the outside might not see us. All right. This is what happens when that happens. Oh, no. Uh -oh. oh, no. As the cloud, window cloud, splits and begins covering the sides, uh, at the base of the carpet is visible <laughs> from below. Yes. And at the exact moment <gasps> that it becomes visible, you see seven, these seven they looked like pipes or whatever kind of like transformer bit and mechanical faces all turn up and stare at you at the exact same uncannily turn up and oh. look at you oh that's creepy and then immediately you roll in uh roll initiative oh, okay oh no dice i don't like these guys i'm a cloud all right. Okay, that's good. All right. Four. Are you gonna throw up an initiative order? Oh, okay. Well, yes, I can. I can do that. That that that, that is what a DM does uh, in situations such as this. I would uh, like. To be able to see I will that. also clear it because that's also a thing that a DM does. Um, you okay. know, when they remember to do it, it's I. It's yes. Fine. Yes. I. You know. I've been I've been playing, you know, at tables recently and this whole contraption has become strange and arcane to me. What is this? Um let's Dirty see. Dirty twenty. Dirty twenty, those are great. Let's add some. Let's add a Wintress. Double click there. Okay. With a dirty twenty. Wait. And Ooh. Harlan. Oh, Harlan with a nineteen. Lamont. Stepping now, Lamont. I want to remind you, um, if you're still here, yes, you're still here. Um, remember that you have received an item which is very neat. Oh, yeah, 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 right, yeah, right. yeah, yeah. You have those, Multiple you have items. those, you have those wrists. Well, you have the two swords mm -hmm. that do awesome things, but you also have the wristbands, uh, the, the actually, they're wrist bracelets right that through. allow you to attack at range with melee attacks. Mm -hmm. What's that? I thought we gave those to Igor. Maybe not. No, no, no. no. Igor, get... Igor got the the claws, the vorpal claws. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Yeah. yeah. So, so you have those now. So, if you can see it, you can hit it. Cool. Okay. Also, as soon as you're like, like you look at this creature, and it turns up at you, and your bracelets light up, and then you notice on each of the heads of this creature you see the same lighting circles around their heads. Ooh. That's weird. Targets. Uh, yeah, that's... <laughs> mm. It makes it easier to see. Yeah, yeah. Does it actually light them up? No, no, they light up. Okay, so, yeah, all right. Well, that's pretty interesting. That is interesting. Yes. Especially since the Bone Devil's the one who had these originally. Well, I don't know if he had them originally. Well, the body of the bone Origin devil. Yes, yeah. oh, originally, yes. Yeah. yeah. Mm. Where we originally found them, I suppose. Yeah, that's true, yes. All right. 
So I'm gonna go with a nice classic here, rope trick, climb my way out. Let you guys handle it. Oh, so God. we're off the carpet. Where, where are we actually? Where are our feet? Uh, your feet are all on the carpet. You're still in the air when this thing notices right. you. So okay. you're starting from this point. Okay. Below you at about, I'd say, 60 to 80 feet is where this thing is located. You haven't descended quite as far. So you are, carpet. I'd say, 80 feet above the ground right now. Uh, the oh, rim of so the high. building is 20 feet away from you and almost parallel to you. So the roof of the building in which you were descending is right out to the sides of you. So Locked by me from the yes. outside view. <laughs> Peace. But, but you guys can kind of see it through the billowing cloud. We're just waiting on Igor to return. Um, oh, I can roll his initiative okay, uh, if you'd like for to the roll time his being. Just that, the... so we can get... Uh, that's Igor's. 17. Yes, Lamont. Oh, 17. Let me descend this again so that we might be even. Why did that not? Oh, because oh, we didn't, I, we didn't drag on. Yeah, token. I didn't give you Yeah, it's okay. Uh, this is more of a, a, a uh, I'll add it in. Uh, this is more of a um, theater of the mind thing. Yes, yes, so, yes. I do have so a you said. Go sorry. Ahead. Sorry. I was just going to say, how dexterous is this coffin thing? <laughs> how dexterous? I, I mean, it looks like it might be connected to the ground in apparently, some way. Apparently more dexterous than Harlan. All right. <laughs> oh. Yeah. Um, I believe you you will get... It's okay. it, You are more dexterous than this large immobile thing. Okay, I would have... <laughs> but not by much. Oh. But... <laughs> Dangerous. Okay, you, well... You... I'm sorry, one question. You yes. said it's about 80 feet away from us? Like yes, down? Yes, it is 80 it's 80 feet below you, but the, the heads are probably you know 40 feet below you. For, okay. Okay, so the base of it, the ground is 80 feet below. You have this large contraption, which is the center is made up of this coffin that looks like centimeters. And then you have these eight arm, leg, neck things that with faces mm -hmm. on them that are pointing up at you now. Okay. And and they have glowing rings around their neck that looks like the same glowing rings that are around Lamont's wrists now. Okay. I say we lie to the heads and just tell them we're here to free them. So, Winters, <laughs> you are first in this interesting combat, if it is even a combat. So, I, Winters doesn't know what this is, and it hasn't really made a threatening move as of yet correct just a just a creepy like we all it's see just kind of looked at us yeah yeah like a yes. head turn it, okay it, it looks aggressive if you could like if you were to feel like maybe it's going to attack you it looks like it's thinking about it I'll okay i feel a threatening aura <laughs> um the, the the air around you is electrified with, yes. with fear, anger, and... Ill intent. I, I feel Ill like intent the, is such a good word. Yeah, <laughs> the air is electrified with Centimere's passionate uh, cursing soon. Um, <laughs> you don't hear any cursing. Yet. <clears throat> oh, that's fair. I'm waiting fair. for that, that second 19 in initiative. <laughs> 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 I am going to hop off the carpet, and I'm going to fly about 20 feet down, so I'm okay. within... 60 feet of this scene mm -hmm. thing um within 20 feet of the head 60 feet of the body if i understand okay. um and i'm gonna cast fairy fire on it okay all right so uh it has to make a dexterity saving throw and my dc is uh 14. okay uh, I have to make a lot of rolls. Um, let's see. What okay, colors so your fairy fire? What does it look like? So, um, Winteris kind of she 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 flies down twenty feet and she puts her hands together and just starts rubbing them together violently, and then when she kind of like explodes them out. Um, it looks like snowfall, like icicles oh, and snowflakes neat. that come out and just kind of settle over this creature. Nice. And anyone that's affected by it is just like encased in frost. I'm reading Fairy Fire real quick, so just give me a second. Yeah. 
close to that. Okay. All right. So I will make these rolls. What was your DC again? Uh, 14. Not okay. great. Uh, you can tell that, that the coffin <laughs> fails immediately. Okay. Um, so far, six of the eight heads have all failed. Uh, two of the heads have not. Okay. So, so six of the eight are are vulnerable. Uh, two of them are not. Okay. So yeah. So any attack roll against an infected creature or object has advantage if the attacker can see it, um, and it can't benefit from being invisible. Right, and so when this light hits it as well, everyone will see that this is a clockwork creature. You would almost call it a clockwork kraken. It is a, a beast of a machine. It is covered in gears and pistons and slides and angles and hinges, and it moves with the sensuousness of a snake, except for the base, which looks like it is planted where that coffin is and connected in the bottom uh, by the floor to the ground. Nice. Uh, and it definitely does look like a Bramsandi creation. Was there anything else you'd like to do, Winters? Um, Would Elviron like to do something? Uh, let me read, because I think I have to use my bonus action to command Elviron if I mm. remember. I believe that is correct. Correct. If not, Oviron takes the dodge action on its turn. Yeah. Um, I'm gonna. Can she hold an action? Can Oviron hold an action? Um. Can I? Can I? No, I don't. I don't mind. I think. I think you'd be able to command th with the use of your bonus action. You tell Oviron yeah. to attack us with a certain restriction on when. And so, yeah. yeah, I'll give you that. Okay. Okay. Then I'm gonna just in draconic. Um, uh, Elviron, if anything, like, comes at us, just bite the shit out of it. <laughs> so if so, essentially the trigger is if anything comes within range of Elviron or, or I. Okay. And that's my turn. Okay. Yeah. Harlan, your turn is next. Uh, no, you just called this thing a Kraken. <laughs> yes, Clockwork uh, Kraken. But as I see it, it has many heads. It does. Hydra. All right. Now, to deal with something with many heads, I probably want to use a Vorpal Sword. <laughs> so you what I'm going to do is haste Igor. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. Now, I will say uh -huh. that, your, that the description of heads... When you look at it now in the light of the fairy fire, yes. it looks as though what you thought was heads per se are actually like uh, visual range finders. They're not so much mouths. It looks like they're more like that. What you thought was a mouth was more like a gripper and they had eyes so they could see where they're going. So while they, they kind of look like faces they're really just mechanical constructs of independently operating tentacles is this a mechanical beholder i wish i had that but no it's not a beholder. <laughs> it's almost as good though okay oh, wonderful okay. well so you're, you're hasting I'll, i mean i'll let you change your your idea if you want to no nah, i'll still i'll still haste igor okay yeah Okay, so you've used your you have any bonus actions? You gonna drop the carpet lower, higher, keep it. Yes, I will move the carpet just above the floor. <laughs> oh, so you're go you're going past the the heads and you're going right above the floor. So you're you're descending eighty feet. The heads. Um. Well, you guys were you guys were lowering straight down over it, from what I understood. Now you could move to the side and go down. Uh. Well, you could land right on the coffin if you wanted to. <laughs> Well, yeah, you know, I could think of worse ideas. I I mean, I need to get my boys in range here, so okay. that's, that's what I plan on doing. So uh, you, so you drop down to the coffin? Yeah, sure. Yes, that'll work. <laughs> just above okay. the coffin, like you were hovering above the floor, you're just hovering above the coffin? Okay, so you descend within this forest of, of tentacle-type metal columns, 
that are just they as you go below they start looking down at you like this yeah good all right the next up will be coffin thing coffin thing Uh oh (laughs) from within and a muffled sound you hear free me help i don't want to be here help me now each one of those voices sounded different. I'm not doing it as much justice as I would like to because I don't really feel like trying to try that hard. But it sounds like what you imagine a kinku would be saying. Oh. Oh my gosh, is Centimere a kinku vampire? Because <laughs> that would be. No, amazing. no. You, you remember Centimere. Oh, it was um, a dwarf. Yeah. yeah, it was a dwarf who was angry and cursed in his own voice. If it was a kinku and he only heard someone say. I'm a dwarf, and a bunch of dwarves swearing. That's all you'd be able to... I'm that is saying. true. But the creativity in which Centimere used his, his curses is, is probably beyond what a kinku would be able to employ. So this is not... Centimere is not yet in the coffin. That no. is interesting. <laughs> Centimere has not yet found his way into the coffin. But perhaps the coffin was empty because you all had already emptied it. <gasps> <gasps> Time travel. Woo! All right. So, anything else? Uh, so, you hear pleading from within the coffin thing, and some uh, like sloshing around. But that's it. Sloshing. Sloshing. All right. Igor, um, to catch you up. Um, Thank you. <laughs> Wintress has dropped a fairy fire on the uh on the creature and most of it failed and now it is illuminated and you guys have descended into the fairy fire um surrounded by eight large tentacle looking things Uh, this creature has been described as a clockwork kraken um harlan has cast a spell on you that makes your heart run like you drank 15 cups of coffee so you have your hasty um and um within the coffin Something has asked for help in the voice of four or five different creatures. Oh, obviously we should help it out. So, um, are we in an initiative? Oh, we are. Yes, so, you are. <laughs> yes. It it's is, your turn. It is me turn. Oh, yes. well, I mean, unless Wendell said otherwise. I'm a cloud. <laughs> He's a fluffy cloud. Oh, well, and, uh, obviously And probably somebody needs still our way up there because yes. I'm much slower oh, than the carpet. Well, fine, Gold. I'm opening the coffin. <laughs> Okay, you want to open the coffin. Yes. All right. Don't how, worry, I'll get you out. How do you want to open the coffin? Uh, can you go rip it open? Um, I mean, just grabbing it and opening it. How big is this coffin? Is it stone? Is it wood? This I is mean... a metallic coffin, um, about seven foot by three foot by two feet. Ooh. Okay. And I will give long. you a strength check to pull the lid, but it will be very hard. It's easier to open it other ways. But you are a barbarian. Everything is within your purview to rip apart. Perfect. Okay, he'll try and rip that lid off with brute strength. A 10. Igor, you're killing me, No, it's really hard (laughs) to, to, uh, you know, oh, I meant to say this at the beginning of the game, but I forgot. I'm giving everyone inspiration because (gasps) Merry Christmas, Happy Happy New Year, Happy Holidays, Feliz Navidad, all that. So, if you'd like mm-hmm. to, you can re-roll that. Well, yeah, um, you can use an object action twice, because it's wasted. Well, oh, that's true, actually, you can. All right, so you can use it again. That. And would it so, be athletics uh, to open the coffin? Well, or you just could strength? use athletics. I mean, well, when I say a strength check, I, I don't, anything that counts as strength, so athletics would work well, on that I, as well. I mean, I do have a war ammo. And if I'll... you rage with your bonus action, you would have advantage on that already. One sec here. I was looking at. And then my my inspiration would give you a plus five on top of that, if you were already advantaged. Oh, that's a lot going on right there. Just saying. Um, yes, I mean, it is a lot. I could probably use my spiky bit, my warhammer, and try to pry it or just smash it. I mean, it is metallic. Oh, uh, yeah, smashing it, it probably wouldn't do so well. It just. Yeah, Igor would just try again. This time, I would get mad at the coffin because it's okay. not running. Because it didn't open the first time. <laughs> Yeah, he's, he's raging at it now, so All right. he's mad. Okay, and okay. then he'll do the athletics, athletics check we agreed on? Yes, athletics is fine, so you have advantage on that. Ooh. 
19. All right. And if you if you use your uh, if you use your inspiration that everyone I've given everyone that would give mm -hmm. you a plus five on top of that. So that would give let's, you a twenty four. If you thought that it was necessary, use it. let's use it full force. Inspiration gone twenty four. Okay. I I was actually going to say it was a twenty three. So that gives you a twenty four to <laughs> open. So you rip open this this detailed <laughs> wonderful contraption of a of a coffin lid, <laughs> and it <laughs> tears open, and the fairy fire illuminates all that's within perfect which is a green mass of just smelly goo and inside the goo is like a helmet and a like a clasp of some kind and the goo is moving independently of the um of the of the machine but it starts saying thank you in like 19 different like voices Oh, uh, and it is uh, not gelatinous cube goo. Oh, it, it, good. I, that was my next concern. I was like, it, is this the consciousness of that gelatinous cube out there? It radiates almost a necromantic kind of well, aura. Like I mean, I doubt we'd have much time to actually say much of anything, so we could probably just be kind of confused and be like, yo, welcome. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. No, that ain't all kinds of stuff. No, not at all. You're free. <laughs> oh, wonderful. Hey, look at that. After that, before you guys can beat this without having to actually fight, it's the head's turn. <laughs> uh, they they fight in tandem, these tentacles. So you'll actually only have four attacking at a time. And they each target different ones. Now, um, Wintress, you're up in the air still. I'm up in the air still, too. Okay. Wintress, like you were the first one around. to do something. So it actually makes an attack at you. You notice that the, the the glowing blue rings around the head activate and get bright. And then it kind of like distorts and the end of the tentacle is gone now and you see it appear next to you. Oh, and it will make, no. <laughs> it will make an attack and it is a slam attack. Okay. All right. While it slams me, does Elviren get her attack. Yes. As it appears, it's within range. Elviren can make an attack okay. against an AC of 17. <sighs> okay, let me... It's stolen our technology! Uh, she... I vote after we get rid of these tentacles, we take their bracelets too, and every member of the party has... <laughs> I mean, I'm sorry. Uh, she that. misses. <laughs> okay. All right, a 14. So she makes an attack and and it just, you you hit it, but because it's metal, it's a lot harder to damage. Mm -hmm. And so it doesn't do quite as much. And so it goes on to make its attack at you. The two heads trying to slam down, well, the two tentacles trying to slam down on you at the same time. That is a 19 plus nine for a 28. Mm -hmm. That'll definitely hit. And that is five plus five. That is 10 damage bludgeoning. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. The next attack goes against Igor, who attacked its uh, its its center control unit. Uh, Fourteen plus nine is twenty three. Does that hit? Yeah, Igor? that hits. You're raging, so you'll have half damage on this. Uh, that is seven plus five for twelve. You take six bludgeoning damage. Oh, really? Next attack uh, is against the cloud. Oh no! Yeah, uh, that is a eight plus nine for seventeen. That that does hit, yes. Okay, uh, and you take eight plus five. I have a question. Thirteen, yes. Is this blood? Is this magical damage? It is magical damage. Okay, because I have resistance to non-magical damage as a cloud. Yes, the the because <laughs> of the way that the you imagine that the the teleportation like dimensional. Splitting yes. provides a certain energy okay. to it, making it so magical. How much was that total? Um, that was going to be 13. 13. It was 8 plus 5 for cool. 13. Boop. Um, and the last one will go against Harlan. Uh, that is 11 plus 9 for a 20. Does that hit Harlan? Oh, I don't think so. What's your armor class, Harlan? 21. Ah, so yes. it, it hits you, but doesn't do any damage. Um, as they hit. And so they these tentacles are all now floating out in the air and all the tops of the tentacles are missing as you see them 
whirling around the room, much like Lamont's new attacks can do. I can that, still attack him at the base. That brings up, oh, speaking of Lamont, Lamont Quinlan. You yeah. see these heads from the, the, these tentacles split and react like your new attacks can, and they attack everyone but you. Do I feel like I can control them on any level? I like move my fingers and see if I can't like, do, do I have any level of control over them? No, you're just using similar technology to be able to attack at range. Right, okay. Then I'm going to slice them. Okay, you're going to make attacks at them. Yeah. All right. So you're you're down on, you're right above the coffin. You can see inside the coffin. Actually, if you want to give me uh, a tinkerer's check um, or or an arcana or like, what do we what do we normally roll for you with tinkerers? Intelligence plus proficiency. That. Uh, yeah, yeah. You just do a d20 plus your intelligence and your proficiency. Because you're you know you're proficient and you you have an understanding. Oh right. God, uh, you have inspiration if you'd like to use it to take that advantage. I will use it to take okay. that advantage. Um, Come on. Now. Well, see that you don't have you don't have your for your proficiency in there, do you? I don't. What is that like? A, uh, what your proficiency plus three? Bonus? Yeah. So mm. that would be a fifteen. Fifteen. Okay. With a fifteen, you can tell that while you don't understand what the green goo inside the coffin is. You do know that it looks like the helmet and the uh, control piece or the, 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 the ring look to be the connection between whatever it is that goo is and the control mechanisms of the um, of this Kraken, Clockwork Kraken. And okay. if you were to damage or remove them, perhaps you could disable this Kraken before it really starts getting going. Yeah, I want to straight up try to pull out the control piece if I can get a hold oh, of it. Okay, well, you're right above it. You can drop down and then just grab it. Uh, yes, well, uh, drop down. <laughs> oh, that's right. That's right. You don't have to drop down. You just like your hands disappear and go in and you grab it. And now, well, hands... there's that too. This is, I was saying, this is a good opportunity to drop, to, to unfold, unfurl my cloak and drop down in dramatic fashion. However, don't well, it's only to. it's only like a foot down, so it's not really very dramatic to drop yeah. that far. You're killing me, Frank. So then I'm, I'm sorry. Harlan is the one that moved first. Teleport hands. Okay, now that's pretty awesome. And get them. Or and you my, my hands disappear through portals and then reappear through portals that are over there, right? Well, they literally portals form right in front of your hands, and then as you move them through, right, so they that come is. out on the other side. That's fucking cool. These are where you cool. want, wherever you're seeing. Okay, and so you grab the helmet, and yeah. you hear that that disembodied weird voice going yes yes no yes yes and and you rip that out and you lift it up and you see f half of the heads fall and there's still one more what looks to be a control rod of some kind lying in the goop a rod well it could, it's a it's a it's a ring mm -hmm. ring it almost looks like a ring that would mm -hmm. go around someone's neck Next. Except this goo doesn't have that. Can I reach it can, with my other attack? Can I can I go and, and try to grab that too? Well, you really only have one attack because you're a rogue. Yeah. Fine. Okay. All right. All right. I accept the rules. What, of now, what type of rogue are you? You're a, what type of rogue are you? Uh, fucking fast one. Uh, uh, well, yeah, well, <laughs> of course. Uh, and it's, well, wait, where does it say that? Are you, a, are, you a, rogue. are you a thief? Like what is what is your subclass for your for your oh, rogue? Yeah. Oh, I know how to find that out. Uh I go to because it doesn't say on your straight up vanilla. Oh, it, it should, but yeah, I, inquisitive. You know what? Let's it says on your D and D beyond. Inquisitive. Rogue inquisitive. Okay. All right. So you really are Batman. Um yes, yeah, so you, yeah. you don't get a a free action to right. to interact with items, unfortunately. Okay. All right. You just get to brood with the as an inquisitive. You get oh, holding this helmet, right? Right. Uh, I look over it down at the rod, mm -hmm. and and form my plan to reach down there and get it. Okay. All right. So everyone else has seen. This is what happened. So has happened so far. Wendell, I'm a cloud. Uh, you said yes, there was like a. Um, is there anywhere to land that's not on the bot? Like, is there a lip that's not above the top of the building? 
Is there like a like balconies or like what? How is the? No, it doesn't look here? like this. Almost looks kind of like a warehouse kind of thing. Wonderful. Um, in yeah. that case, I guess I will. Uh, oh, so th the tops of these buildings are really like distressed, and there's like cracks and stuff through them, and vines growing and shit. Yeah, they're they're, they're yeah. They're, they've been here like this for a while. Because it would take me eight rounds to get to the floor. Um, I'm just gonna and they seem take to you have one this... round if you drop cloud. But then I fall 80 feet, so that doesn't sound like... Um, I'm just trying to help. I don't think I can survive that many d6s of fall damage. Um, yeah, I'm pretty confident if you fall in the goo, maybe you'll be fine. You know, uh, I, I already told Winters I was going to test that ooze bath theory later. So oh, okay. fair. I'm going to look for a nearby crevice uh, within, you know, 10 feet of me and just... I'm going to say that uh, it looks like there's a, a, a maintenance ledge... Yes. You know, like, um, maybe like a, a uh, lower zone. Because if someone cables. dies, I'm the one with resurrection, so, you know, I can... I think you can get to it and drop your form without fall. Mm-hmm, yeah. But I you'll can... be 60 feet above the ground. Cool. No, I can, because, yeah, I can just, I can pass through small holes, narrow openings, and even mere cracks. So I just cloud into the, some maintenance shaft or okay. crack or something. There you go. And I, and I watch, I observe. You observe with your cloudy eyes. Yes. The cloud sees all. My cumulonimbus eyes might cry if people die, but we'll see. Might rain. Winterous. Is that rain? A gray cloud. <laughs> <laughs> it's your turn. Uh, so... Igor has opened up the coffin. Um, Lamont has removed something from inside the coffin. There seems to be one other thing inside the green goop that is yelling at you. Well, is pleading. Um, four of the heads are deactivated. Four of the heads have deactivated once you removed the uh, the helmet. Now, and also, once it was removed, you notice that there is a small, like, almost ephemeral cable running from the helmet into the machine. Okay. Um, there's a head, a helmet right next to me, right? Oh, the helmet, well, yeah, uh, the helmet. Oh, you mean, okay, the head that hit you. Uh, one of the heads has dropped. And so there is just, because two were attacking at a time, Mm -hmm. And one, as soon as Lamont pulled that helmet out, one of the heads has just, well, it's, it's pulled back through the portals and fallen inert. Okay. But there's still one right in there's front of me. There's still one. Yes. Okay. I'm gonna attack that one. Okay. Um, is this one of the fairy fired ones? Yes. Okay. Uh, 21 to hit. Oh, that is a hit. For eight piercing okay uh and that is definitely a magical weapon so it does its full damage and then um at the start of each of it's got the wound thing i don't know if mm -hmm. that applies to i don't think it applies on constructs constructs yeah um and then because i have the mobile feet i'm gonna go down to the coffin And can I grab that thing that's in there? Well, you've already made an attack. Uh, you haven't done an item interaction. How much, um, what's your movement? Uh, 40 feet. Um, I believe I... you were still 60 feet up. So you can be 20 feet you were, yes. you were 20 feet, yeah, so you would yes. not quite be there yet. Okay, then I'll, I'll, I'll drop down the 40 feet and, uh, that's it, I think. All right, you, oh, you see uh, the... Yes. Sorry, bonus action, Elviron's going to attack that. Okay, Elviron makes an attack. Uh, 12 misses. Armor's too tough to get through this metal. Yeah. Elviron's not used to fighting things like this. Yeah. Uh, and right. Elviron, uh, she'll come down with me. Uh, she doesn't, the, the head will get an attack of opportunity. It hits with a 25. Ah, okay. <laughs> but it does half damage now, so that is seven damage. Seven, so 30. Three. Okay, and she'll come down with me. Okay. All right, Harlan. Yeah. So let's uh, oxidize some of that metal with a bit of time decay. Oh. Yeah. Which? What are you attacking? I want to attack like the neck of one of those. Okay. The one. The one that's still. It's one of the, the tentacles that's still up by you. Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. 
Oh, well, that is definitely a hit. And you see that this particular metal uh, withers and rusts, it creaks and cracks in some places. You see fissures. It looks like it couldn't take another hit like that. Yes, very good. And when you when you see that, you actually see the entire mechanism shudder. Like the damage is transferred all the way through to the main system. Oh, I see. All right. All right. Uh, Coffin awesome. thing. Coffin thing in the voice of a kinku, which is the many voices, the things it's heard before, um, just continues saying, yes, yes, please let me out. Please just stop this thing. I, I Help me. And that's all it really does. It doesn't do anything else other than that. I mean, what? We already let you out. Why are you asking to be let out again? Well, How do we let you? Well, it feels Uzi. It is Uzi. And it does have that control rod still in it. It's Uzi yes. So we have to let him out of the ooze? Well, we, I think we got to take the control rod out and then maybe get him a red solo cup or something. I don't know. <laughs> okay. Well, Igor's got a plan for this. Oh, no. I'm don't, excited, though. Don't consume the ooze, Igor. Oh, no, 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 no. Um, <laughs> I mean, it's, it's your turn, right. Igor. Uh, yes. Well, Igor would go to, in his rage, and kind of angry and smash his hand into the coffin a little bit. You hear, you hear the green ooze scream. Okay. Oh, oh, I'll get you out of there. And uh, Igor is going to start rage scooping him. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> so it said silly, but Igor wants to attack. The coffin i'm thinking to keep his rage but it playing it off as the frustration and then no 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 no. i'm okay with that to, i'm okay with that to do that all right so so you begin rage scooping hasted um, rage scooping haste, you guys you. hasted <laughs> rage scooping and you just see you, you hear a, a, a diminishing scream of actual pain <laughs> oh as as you're throwing <laughs> the liquefied remains of this thing all over the room. <laughs> well, it there we go. It doesn't stay together. It seems like as long as it was in the coffin, it was. It had some sort of semblance of, of <laughs> connectivity, um, but it is now mostly splattered across the warehouse floor that you're in. I think we're going to need a mop, Igor. However, <laughs> however, the Kraken is still activated because not all of the goo has been removed. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I love it. All right. Um, the, okay. There's going to be. I'm, I'm sorry be... to all y'all in advance if you had other plans, but I'm sorry. It's, it's four evil. attacks. I think you do. There's four attacks on the people who who have been doing. So um, we're going to get uh, another attack on Harlan. Uh, that is a twenty-seven. Oh. I just lost a D6. Uh, actually, hold on. You know what? No, I'll just let it hit me. <laughs> okay, it's for, for six damage. Fine. Roll concentration. I'll take the six damage. Roll your concentration check. Yes, yes, I heard you. Roll. Here comes the one. Ah, oh, damn it. No. Nope. Harlan Strong. is cool and composed. Yes, yes, yes he is. Okay. Uh, attack against uh, Igor, which is a 20. Ah, uh, yep, it hits. Just barely. For eight damage. Oh, max damage on the one head. Um, the the head that was attacking you before Wintrist teleports back down to you, and that is a 25. For three damage. And then... Um, I'm just another brick in the wall. Now. Right. The the heads lose sight of you <laughs> and then um uh and 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 begin no, I'm not even gonna I'm not even gonna touch that. I, um I lose my fairy fire. Lose I fairy think. fire. Oh yeah. three damage and you yeah. You don't have uh, do you have uh Warcaster? Nope. Okay, yeah, you lost it. <laughs> and then so one of the heads comes down and gets uh Lamont from behind with a twenty five uh for five damage. Sorry, Lamont, you're more used to dying than I am. <laughs> Lamont, it's your turn. You've just been slapped by a tentacle. <laughs> a mechanical yeah. tentacle. All right, so, but this thing is still up and around. Uh, Igor didn't completely destroy it. I'm going for the control rod down there. Okay. In the jelly. 
So you reach in, you grab the control rod with your extendo um, stretch arm, strong arms. Yes. Um, and as soon as you remove that control ring, all of the heads stop moving and fall inert. And you're all out of it, out of initiative. I pull it back to me and I look at it. And I, I examine it closely. Then I, I would like to crush it in my bare hands if, or electrify it with my shot gloves in dramatic fashion if possible. But, uh, okay, um, if you give me another uh, artificery check before you crush it, you might want to look at I wanna, it. I want to look at it before I completely destroy it. Yeah, maybe. Might be. Oh, that, I, plus, you actually get three, you actually get a twenty five. So, so you know that this is um, quite a bit of engineering. It is this is a fully automated control rod that siphons energy from both living and necromant necromantic energies to power the operating system of this of, of this high this you know Hydra slash Kraken. Um, it's quite a bit of technology and could be possibly configured to do other things if you wished it to, or you could just break it out of frustration. Uh, is it, it's like a staff or like a, no, no, this is, this is sort of like a, a it's, it's a neck. It's, it's a, it's Oh, right. A, it's like a collar. Yeah. It's yeah, a yeah. Collar. There you go. That's the word I'm looking for. Collar you know, and the helmet. They look oh, like and both who has them. necromantic energies? Mr. Not alive, sir. True. So if you would put it on the, 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 the Kraken might turn back on. Actually, anyone putting these on would turn the Ooh. Kraken back on. And we wouldn't necessarily control it. We would, we would just be back on. Well, not when you're it's in the configuration. That, well, you're pretty confident that the, 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 the dead Kinku thing that Igor is currently splashing across the warehouse um, hey, but guys wasn't able to him. control it. I mean, you guys may want to interrupt Igor. Also, probably empty the whole thing thinking he's still saving the thing. I, if I, you guys are okay with that, he will. No, no, it's it's okay. I love this image. Okay, yeah. Igor's going to continue scooping. Oh, save you! And, he's, and he's I don't think Wendell, the... as I just float out of the vent uh, <laughs> telepathically, because I can't speak in cloud form, just to Igor. Igor, you're splattering that poor liquid kenku all over the walls. Get a mop, you fool! <laughs> Igor stops like mid like arm, and there's like goop all over him, all over the wall, and he's like, <laughs> yes. Oh. Well, well, he's just going to look around the room and see if he can fashion a mop out of spare rags. I imagine you have a mop in your, as part of your butler. He, he very well may, like a collapsible mop. I yeah. believe it. I mean, all right, that's it. Collapsible mop. Igor has one. He's whipping it out. Of course. <laughs> mop up the All right, so, so you go about cleaning up the kinku. Which, Squeezing it back uh, into the coffin. May or may not uh, work. Uh, I mean, okay, he'll clean it up. I don't. I, I mean, if unless there's another vessel, yeah, he'd probably put it back in the coffin. Well, you look around now that you are no longer being attacked, and this is a wonderland of half-built projects, um, refuse, and and paper. There are just things strewn all over this entire garage. All of them look like they could be something great. They look like they might like. It looks like a, a madman had a field day and couldn't decide what it was building. Oh, is there any kind of vessel like a bucket? Oh yeah, you can find many different sizes of buckets. Oh, perfect. He's going to do a bucket. Hey, Igor is going to start You've found out a with bucket his bare hands. that, if powered properly, can walk and pick up its own stuff. Like it's oh. a, little, a little bucket with arms and legs. Oh, Igor tells Since that we're to junior. Him. Yeah, I was going to say, you're kidding me. <laughs> Igor is now infatuated with that thing and its brilliance. And in fact, he doesn't even care about the thing he just scattered all over the room. He's just squeezing it out into the bucket, and then he's just kind of playing with the bucket thing. Yeah, all right, I'll get back to you with the bucket and the and the goo. Rage playing. <laughs> yes. Yeah, you're still raging, and then and then as soon as you collected everything, the rage wears off, and you just go lethargic. Right. Mm -hmm. Is anyone else doing anything inside this large cavernous room full of mechanical detritus and fun? I descend to the floor. How long has it been since I first clouded? Um, I'd say it's probably been a good 30 minutes. Maybe 45, somewhere in that range. Okay, I'll stay in cloud form for now, but I'll be down near Arlen and Lamont. I'll just be cloud amongst the group. 
Uh, Holland will investigate the inside of this box. Okay. Um, it's a box. What trapped him? It locks on the outside. It looks like, it looks like what it was, it was played, whatever was in there was placed in there. But it wasn't a vampire, apparently. No, but you do yeah. notice that there is no way to exit once you're in. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Well, I won't be being a guinea pig to that, definitely. And then uh, if you take a look at the items that Lamont's holding, both the collar and the helmet, each have these ephemeral cabling that looks huh. like it w would not even interact with um, the closing of the lid on the case and that it connects into the mechanisms that operate this large Kraken thing. I see. They're not even part of the case. No. Well, they're not part of the case, but they they they're ah, okay. It, the case closes and it doesn't cut them off or crack, create a crack. It kind of phases in and out of the okay. case itself. Interesting. Not cables like that. I would like to identify these things to get a better idea of what they are and how they work. Okay. Um, roll me an identification. Or are you yeah. casting identify? I am casting identify. Uh, you know, I'm just going to spend a little while here. Chill out. Okay. Looks All like right, so you're meditating and you Then and I identify. will decloud. Okay. Yes. I mean, you know, we're going to need your expertise in this also. Oh. Okay, so Wendell declouds. Thank you, Harlan. <laughs> uh, Winters, what are you doing right now? Um... What, okay, so this room is full of like mechanical debris and mm -hmm. stuff. Yes. Can I do like an investigation check to see if there's anything else of interest in this room? Absolutely. Uh, invest. I'm not an intelligent character for a two. <laughs> oh, it's just lots of fun baubles and things out here. It's just, this is fun. This is a playground. Everything is everything. I am pressing buttons and pulling levers and picking stuff up and pulling stuff apart. And I'm back on my bullshit. So. Okay. Yeah. You, Stop you, doing that. You could destroy us all. I didn't destroy us all last time. It'll be fine. All of the buttons are buttons are pressed. Bootins. All the bootins are pressed. All, All the, the bootins have pressed. been pressed. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, well, as things go by and everyone is messing around with the things they are and Harlan is focusing, Igor, you finally mop up all of, 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 of gooey, uh, gooey kinku yes. and place it inside of the, um, of the bucket, the walking oh. bucket that you found. And, and then after you squeeze out the remainder from, that was from your clothing, uh, the the walking container comes alive, and it turns around and looks at you and puts its little metal arms on its metal sides. Why did you do that? That hurt. Uh, I hello bucket. I didn't mean to put stuff inside of you. I didn't I realize it would hurt you. Oh, uh, you you're walking bucket to me. No, oh, you are walking bucket to me too. I'm not Bucket, I'm Butler. I'm Eagle. Mm. Who's in charge? Uh, me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Eagle, you finally finished. Oh, good. The, uh, go, the Kenku. Uh, Sis, hello. What's the Kenku? It, the creature you flung out of the coffin, although in liquid form. Oh. Uh, Kinku can change form. No. W Wendell thinks about how he can answer that. And his first reaction is to say, With a everything melts, but um, but everything doesn't quite melt. And that just opens more cans of worms. And he just is uh, not usually. Uh, the, the Kinku goes on. And I, I hate trying to make a Kinku voice because they're just... Oh, you're good. You're good. Uh, it, mm -hmm. The Kinku goes on to explain... It has a bucket voice now. That's fine. 
that um mm. yes Swar- uh, Swar- yeah, yeah you, you suddenly hear a little robotic voice it sounds like iron man inside one of his suits <laughs> saying that bramsandi put him in this and that he was once the high priest of oh, this town that's terrible bramsandi we are we're looking for that devious devious washed it why would they person. make a wash bucket would you charge? kill it we would we would strongly consider it. Um, it's definitely on our list of possibilities. Great. Yes. I'll tell you how to get there. Wonderful. And with that, we're going to call it early this evening because we have a few of our members that are not feeling that great today and are needing to leave as quickly as possible. So let's go around real quick and say who we are. And we're sorry you're not feeling well and all those things. So let's start off with Wentress Gilsine. How are you? I'm doing okay, trucking on. Um, I'm no Dasaurus. I play Winter Skills Scene, the Drake Warden Fairy Ranger. Um, my favorite part was Igor rage scooping. <laughs> the visual there, uh, I love it. I say it all the time. I want more Igor. Igor is my favorite character. Um, yeah, that's me. You can find me here Mondays, Tuesdays, the occasional Saturday when we play Aliens, and uh, I'm excited to see how this campaign's going to end. It's going to be it's going to be a little wild. So, yeah. yes, I can't wait for you specifically to see how this campaign ends. Uh, let's go on over to Harlan, who also needs to get out of here really quickly. Yes, I am. Um, well, you know, let's see. Uh, oh, yes, I'm D20 Coup de Gras. You find me here playing Mondays, Wednesdays, sometimes Saturdays. And stuff. Uh, shoot, uh, I liked the the scooping part definitely. Um, I got really confused when he described the the beast as we were floating in. Uh, I was just like, "Oh, okay, it's a mechanical hydra or something." And um, I think I misinterpreted that, but uh, I'm glad it kind of ended up the way it was. So. Uh, it all turned out great. Um, thank you. Thank you. Uh, on over to Igor. Yay, it me. Yeah, Shiny Pilot 206, playing Igor, Hunchback. He's just a, a bucket of scooping. Uh, anyways, yeah, it was great to do that. It was great to be part of you guys fighting this giant creature. I'm glad we stopped it. Glad it didn't kill anybody because it could have been worse. Um, I like the fighting. I like you guys supporting my crazy antics, making Igor do crazy stuff. So thank you for that. <laughs> and uh, thank you for being watching. Thank you as well. On to Lamont. Uh, I love this adventure in particular because I'm pretty sure that the only thing my character said out loud the whole time was bird people, dude. Uh, <laughs> Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. <laughs> I'm, I'm producer Trav. I'm very glad to be here and see all these wonderful people. I'm very lucky to get to do this. Lindy, thank you for the opportunity to play. Uh, and, and this is just wonderful. Uh, we're going to play Aliens at some point. But we know we're going to play Ravenloft tomorrow. Or I'll be Elam D. Wood Jr. And I've got a hankering to play a one-shot. Uh, I have an eye. I got a thing I want to do. I, we're going to talk about it. I gotta want to do a one-shot. Have a great day tomorrow. Be good to each other. I love you. Well, uh, after all that, love you too. Wanted to play your one shot and yes, be good to each other and party on Wayne. Party on, party Garth. on Garth. I don't know. Party on Jeff. Uh, okay. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to count myself out here before passing it on to Lindy. Um, the idea why this creature was supposed to be really, really great. If, if Wendell had not clouded and hid you guys, those teleporting tentacles were going to attack you the whole time oh, you were out there no. from the moment you touched something. That's terrifying. But because you hid, <laughs> you weren't going to have them. Like one tentacle would attack and you'd kill it. And then another tentacle would come in and attack and they'd come from different angles and they move at different speeds. So you could fly away, but they'd Ooh. keep coming. Like zombies moving at a certain speed. It was going to be fun. Happy you guys, little you, clouds for the win. Exactly. You, you guys Ross. completely stopped it. I love it. Uh, one <laughs> shots for the win. I'm Deception Check. I run the madhouse here. Unfortunately, we're not feeling that great this week. I even had a little bit of a headache myself. So at least we got to play. That's the best part. I'm glad we got to play. We are probably four or five sessions away from finishing the campaign, depending on how things go. I say that, and now these guys were going to a, <laughs> a two-week travel uh, montage 
which will take us six months to get through. But we're close. We really are. And uh, that's I'm only happened forward... once. <laughs> yes, it was it was wonderful. I'm looking forward to the end because I want to see what you guys do, how you handle it, and then I want to see the last episode we're going to play. It's going to be a montage of where you guys end up. So I want to know what you guys do. We're going to go through all that. It'll be a lot of fun, and then we'll move on to something new. I, who knows? Maybe we'll, maybe we'll move on to uh, a Lamont Quinlan one shot. I don't know. We could have many, many things could happen, or 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 a producer trap one shot, or I don't know. Maybe Elam D Wood Jr. takes over for a day. I have no idea. This is a strange world we live in. So I'm going to pass it on over to Wendell Eustace Happen, Matthew Lucius Throckmorton, Haas of Ever the Fourth, and the Habits from Haas and Flappers, Laugh, Love, Wendy. I, I bet you're looking forward to my next character having a hopefully shorter name. Um, no, I, I, it's going to have 19 names next time, next time <laughs> I think. Or I'm going to give you 19 names when I play my character. You know, that's fair. That's 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 fair. Um, you know, I just had to spell the initials wealth. That's all I wanted out of life at the time when I created this pompous asshole. Um, but I love him. And I loved being a cloud today. Um, it's I got to live out my great cloud dreams of the spell gaseous form, which I've had since he was like much lower level and i'm very happy that it got us non tentacle beaten um the whole time we were in the sky that sounds like a great advantage that we had um other favorite moments was igor uh flipping open the coffin lid and there just being goo in the side yeah i was gonna say that the goo reveal was kind of interesting that was, that was surprising yeah yeah that was pretty cool so you know, it was a good reveal. Um, <laughs> and that's, I will uh, stop puns for the next 10 seconds uh, and tell you, thank you all so much for watching. Uh, this was super fun. You can find us here tomorrow night for Mist of Ravenloft where, uh, you know, things happened last time that we played that I'm trying to recall. Oh yeah, there was like, you know, some mind flayer adjacent creatures um a lot of constitution saving throws i should have just named last episode con saves uh because that's what happened and you know most of those con saves uh were successfully rolled um most of the poison was avoided but you know maybe not all of it um but we'll find out tomorrow hopefully uh so tune in for that because they're trying to have a nice little pleasant tea time with Aslan and be like hey can you say back in the past bro we'll see what happens it's gonna be great i'm looking forward to it um and of course yeah there'll be aliens later this month and maybe one shots and who knows what else i'm very excited about well, all the wondrous things that the future could bring so thank you all so much for watching until next time have fun play games mm -hmm.